Hi, I'm Ryan, and today I'm going to show you how to build a miniature Gemma arcade. Some overview first. Inside this cabinet, there is not a Raspberry Pi. The core board of this is actually one of these 501 Jamma boxes. So I've already taken it out of its PS4 case, the Jamma board, or the Jamma connection sticks out right here. And if you look at this closely, it's just a ARM Cortex-8 single board CPU uh, with an SD card on it and a VGA and audio out connection. The nice thing about these boards, since they're modern and they are just direct replacements for old JAMA arcade cabinets, they are very low power. Here's a traditional JAMA replacement power supply. This is 130 watt with the 12, negative 5, and 5 volt connections. Since this is pretty much a stripped down tablet computer, we can get by running on very low voltage. Here are most of the parts that make up the cabinet. A few are omitted because they're mirrors of each other, and I've also changed just a few parts on like the second build of this cabinet, just for some things I wanted to change. The 3D model is not necessary to do, but I decided to do this for this one since the marquee and the control panel right below the marquee have some really weird angles and tolerances that are difficult to draw accurately in 2D. So this was a good way to figure out what interference I could get away with and what also just didn't seem to look right. It's also a good way to test your 2D model and make sure all your finger joints are going to fit. Here's a slow build of how the parts fit together in the cabinet. The speaker brackets are in right now with the speaker bracket and a couple parts that make up the marquee and underside area. And the two control panels get glued together to make a half inch thick control panel. So you, we first start with a couple sheets, about five in total of quarter inch plywood. And then this is the laser cutter working. I just placed my phone on top of the clear top. And this is only cutting two parts, but you get the idea. So after all the parts are cut, this is what they look like. There's a lot. Again, it's about five sheets of, of 16 by 24 plywood, so that's almost a four by eight. It's like five twelfths of it. And here's a dry assembly of the exact same 3D model, but with the real parts. I didn't glue this one because I already had two glued for the next couple shots for painting. So I didn't see a th I didn't need to see a third one sitting on my shelf not getting any attention for a while. That's the basic shell. And again, those two get glued together. Make sure you glue this and the other parts we'll get to next. When the cabinet is initially assembled, it still has this puzzle piece look, uh, and we need to do some finish work to smooth everything out. The first thing I do is get some wood filler. Um, I do like this stuff a little bit better than the stainable kind. And we'll fill in all these gaps and we'll sand everything smooth. This is a, a first initial sanding and a first initial fill. Uh, then I filled it again, sanded it again, and then this is the first two coats of Prime. Uh, so this is just a spray paint primer, and we're just trying to get a uniform smoothness on everything. After sanding and filling two or three times, then priming at least twice, sanding again, priming again. And you know, you can do this as many times as you want. It just, until you're happy with it, that's when you're done. It is like a candy apple red from Rust-Oleum with a gloss finish. And there were three coats on of candy apple red. Then I did a sanding of 500 grit sandpaper and then two coats on top of that. This is the artwork and graphics that I made. 
So we have the control panel artwork. I did all this in Inkscape. Uh, totally redone from scratch by hand. Because if you want the, you know, if you want a good print, you need high resolution. And, you know, it's really rare to find this kind of stuff in the proportions you need uh, online that someone's just willing to give away for free. You know, no one gives this stuff away for free. So I had to make my own vector artwork so I can get the right DPI when I print. And, you know, making that vector artwork also helps if you need to make vinyl graphics. So this is loading some vinyl into my vinyl cutter. This is like a $200 vinyl cutter I got on eBay. If you can draw well, this really does pay for itself. So here's the MVS that I'm cutting out. Just one of them. When you peel back the vinyl, hopefully, if your settings are all right, you get exactly what you drew. So I made N MVS and then two SNK Neo Geos. Now it's time to apply them to our paint and dried cabinet. I was doing this today and I hate doing this. I especially hate doing this on camera because some things don't always go right and this first application well, it wasn't straight. So, gotta redo it. I grabbed a ruler and a square and eyeballed this like 8,000 times. And in the end, I ended up just doing it off camera because it's too hard, too much pressure. We're gonna build the speaker assembly. I've got the speaker bracket and I've already mounted the amplifier. This is a two watt amplifier with a digital volume control. Runs on five to 12 volts with stereo output. Uh, so it's already mounted and I've already installed uh, some aluminum standoffs to hold the back plate onto this. So we're gonna add the speakers. Wires are already soldered, soldered to these and they insert like so. We've got a simple hole pattern that will match up. These are three inch speakers mid-range with a four ohm coil load. Insert the second speaker. These are unshielded. Both speakers are in and now we'll just connect it to the appropriate location on our board. So these two holes are for the backlight for the marquee. I've just taken a piece of wood and added some of this cheap LED strip lighting to it. So that's this right here. And two strips connected together runs on 12 volts. Resistors are already in line. And I've just put two leads that come out to a DC female jack. Uh, just so everything's modular, it's easier to put this together. We're going to mount this using number four screws, machine screws, which I have on hand. And we're just gonna use some nylon. These are actually perler beads, because I have a ton of them for don't worry why. And these create pretty good standoffs to create some space between this board and the speaker panel. And that's the speaker and backlight assembly for our arcade. I've already glued the two control panel pieces together and then I've just fastened this HAP joystick with nuts and bolts and locking washers. I've also painted the edges with the latex paint uh, just because the scale of this don't have any T-molding this size and kind of overkill to just get like edge trim anyway. So paint it black just to finish the look. I've already printed out the artwork and cut out the buttonholes for it. And then we've cut a clear acrylic cover for everything. These are hat buttons. Uh, I like them, well, because they're American style, so that's what I'm used to. And because they have a captive nut, uh, it helps with this design as far as like the layers of the artwork and acrylic cover. Then we have the joystick shaft, 
with the dust cover and insert it, flip it over. And we're gonna put the actuator on first and this spacer. So this will actually make the joystick shorter as versus putting the spacer on the other side because uh, we have a smaller cabinet. And then we'll carefully put the set washer in. and put it in place. This next part gets fun. We're going to take our JAMA harness and connect it to our board as well as wire it to our arcade controls. This is a JAMA harness. This is a universal one. You can find these everywhere on eBay. Uh, a 56 pin connector is what this one is. And you notice that I've clipped the two player two controls already because we're making a one player cabinet. There's no reason to store these controls. I'm also going to use those wires for something else. Makes assembly that much easier to look at and digest. You can find a JAMA pinout chart online. Uh, they come in a few different varieties, but this is a standard. So this is a Japanese arcade machine standard. What That's what part of JAMA stands for. This harness actually is wired so buttons 5 and 6, 4, 5, and 6 exist on this board. So where you see no connection or um, some areas might be overlap. So if you find a JAMA pinout chart, there's different varieties for different machines as well as the actual JAMA harness that's wired. So what you find online, you know, take it with a grain of salt. If we look for player 1 up, that's on 18, so that's the part side of the board. So the way this connects into a PCB... This side is where the physical components exist. The other side is just where everything's soldered. Um, so this is referring to, you know, older boards that have lots of through-hole components, uh, you know, from the 80s. So if we want to consult our chart, player 1 up is on 18. So if we look at 18, we find it's a red wire. And if you trust me, if you follow this red wire all the way through this mess, we'll get to right here where it terminates into the up connection. Turn this the right way. On our joystick. So this is the signal side that we're looking at with this wire and it must go to ground. So the ground's pretty easy to figure out. It's the large daisy chained ground connectors everywhere. So doing this on camera, it's going to be an absolute mess. You'd want to wire tie this and organize it in some way. But uh, we're simply just connecting all the grounds now. And make sure you look at, that's the com or common side of the micro switch. And I've already messed up on camera, so we'll just fix that. Didn't happen. And connect all the grounds. Now we've got player one controls wired as far as direction. So the next thing we have to do is put the buttons in. So I've already done this ahead of time. It's just a little messy. And I've labeled my buttons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which coincides with the JAMA harness as far as player 1, button 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we can just plug these micro switches in where they go appropriately. And the easiest way to do that is... First, we need to move our thing around. Uh, so I'm going to use the bottom tab first and push that in. And that's one. We'll repeat that for the rest. We've got all our buttons wired for the main controls. So if you look at where these terminate, these are actually player one start and like coin switch one. So these will be mounted to different locations on our board. Uh, but for right now, we've got main controls and the JAMA up. So you could shorten these wires. I mean, they're long because they're made for a full-size cabinet. So the JAMA board is, you know, a few feet or meters away from where the arcade controls. But we've got room. We'll just zip tie this up and hide it, and no one will ever know. We've got our JAMA board that we've removed from its fancy box and mounted to a piece of wood.
that's going to fit inside our cabinet cabinet and we've also mounted a protective acrylic cover uh, just because it's out of its case and we don't want to accidentally drop a connector where the insulation is backed off and short anywhere on this board so that's what this does uh, we've also got some vent holes for heat so here's our jammer connector it's going to align like this uh, some fancier harnesses have the notch in this place so you can't accidentally do it backwards uh, but starting at pin one the space is at it's going to line up on seven where you can see there's no connection intentionally so put the entire harness and tuck it into the arcade so we can get to the wires from the back um, and before we button everything up uh, I've located the player one start connector and we've got one ground jumper and we're going to put the player one start button uh, in the front panel uh, for this design. So we're just using a regular white button. We're going to put the retaining washer on. And we'll connect the start signal and the ground jumper to this. And somehow by magic we'll try and step this front panel in and place the control panel inside as well. I've tied off the wires and now we're just going to reconnect the JAMA harness to our JAMA board and this is the Pandora's box board if I haven't said. And this will go in the bottom of our cabinet just loosely for now and we will just kind of stuff those in there in whatever way I can. Okay what's left is we have a ground jumper, the coin, and we have ground and 5 volt. We're going to do the main power wiring for this JAMA arcade. Everything is going to be powered off of a 12 volt supply, so just a small wall wart DC adapter. And that main supply is going to go through into a DC jack from the back panel and into this screw terminal board. Uh, so we'll have plus 12 and ground. It'll be broken out through here through a main power switch. And then that power will be carried over to the other devices, the speakers, the backlight, and the main jammer board and monitor. Everything's, I try to make everything modular so the main power to those devices will just be plugged in through these DC barrel jacks. The jammer board requires 5 volts, so we have 12 volts coming out from the main supply and then the ground into this DC buck converter, and that's going to step down our 12 volts in and it'll output 5 volts, which will then come out to this jumper, and then we'll terminate our jammer board to these screws right here. I mount all these electronics to something just to clean things up uh, to this weirdly shaped board and that's only because the monitor we're using um, from looking at it this is like a universal TFT and they've got other mounting points for M3 screws for whatever TFT logic or breakout adapter they want to use so I just copied this whole pattern and to save space and at least organize something I'm just gonna mount my main electronics for power wiring to the back of this monitor. Most of my small arcades are designed around the monitor. So whatever monitor I'm using, I have to figure out how to mount it first and then build the arcade around that. This monitor, um, a little bit simpler, is it's got two mounting tabs on each side. Uh, the only issue is that they're set about a half inch far from the surface of the monitor so I had to make these spacers for it um, and not only that when it mounts flush or if you even mount it uh, to this there's a really large bezel of the actual frame that's not used so to fix all this and to cover up maybe many imperfections on this paint job I actually cut a full bezel 
that will get bolted through everything and this will clean up the look. So we're gonna stick this in through the back, put the bezel on and try to bolt everything and stay in camera frame. Bolts are gonna go in first. So these are number eights and I need to drill out some paint. First we're gonna put the bezel in for our monitor and then we'll insert our screws. I think later I'll change these screws to uh, something black or not like zinc color because it doesn't quite match. So before we insert this, we're going to work from the other side. I'll put a piece of cardboard in to keep those bolts from backing out. And now we'll put our spacers in. So we have our monitor with some circuitry mounted to it. And we figured out where down is. And this part sucks. So we'll try to keep it in frame and insert the monitor where it goes. The monitor is mounted. We've got all the power controls hanging out and wires. But you can see we're getting there. All these switches that power our electronics. And we're just using single pull, single throw switches. And these are going to get inserted into the appropriately sized rectangles right here. Into the arcade um, by friction fit. So just push them in, turn them around, and they have a pretty clean look. So we'll do that for the other two. Cool. Referring to our wiring diagram, we're going to connect the jumper and terminals that I've already crimped and set to make our power connections. So this is technically the hot side or the plus side since these are single pull. So we'll have 12 coming in, main switches, distributes to all others, and then you have independent control of the next two devices, which are the amplifier and the LED backlight. I'm using 16 millimeter diameter push buttons. They also have two connections to light the internal LED. And these are going to be our insert coin button, volume up and down, and then we'll have a spare that we can wire to the jammer board for test or just an extra button to have if we want to change out our board uh, and it requires it. So we'll go to the front and these boards, or I'm sorry, these buttons are just held in with a captive screw nut and they can accommodate up to a 10 millimeter thick panel, which is really nice. And then I've already wired our volume up and down with the appropriate leads. Now we're going to install the marquee. Because again, we're trying to build everything in the marquee before we add more wires. This is really hard to work and it's so small. So I made some artwork for the marquee. Uh, it's just a sandwich. We have 16 inch one sixteenth inch acrylic and I have a, a four slot MVS replication that I just made with uh, shrunk down pictures of some respective games, some Neo Geo games. Um, or we can just do an empty one with blanks or whatever combination. You could even cut these out and insert them if you're really into that. Um, so we'll just put one in right now, taking the back, try to clean off any dust. Marquee is installed. Sorry, I couldn't do it on camera. It's just such a tight space to work. And with my hands in there, you can't see anything anyway. So it's installed now and we can flip it around and you can see through it. You can add, I've actually added this behind it, the blank panel, hard to line up. 
Um, or you could just insert another white piece of paper. And this is thin enough that with the, such a strong LED backlight, it tends to wash out and the colors don't quite match. So another piece of paper in here that's solid white would help uh, this color from being washed out from the intense backlight. Uh, but now we're, we're almost done. See, so this area is a little bit unfinished and we also need to hide this joint. Uh, so I have a panel that I cut out you could paint that, but I found some red plastic that sort of color matches everything. And I even etched in the respective switch identifications and functions. You could fill this with paint. Uh, I didn't do that because I didn't feel like it yet. Uh, what this is going to do is going to bolt onto the bottom and clean that look up a lot. So let's do that. somewhat hidden away from normal view. To wrap this section up, we've still got the coin input and ground from the JAMA harness, and that's gonna go to one of our buttons up here. We have the main power leads that come from the JAMA. These need to go into the five volt output on our power board. which is located right here. And since it's already wired, we only need to connect these to the respective terminals. VGA next and one side of our audio. Since I only have a six foot cord on hand, that's what I'm using, but I'm waiting for a 18 inch cord, VGA cord to come in the mail. And we'll also do our stereo audio in. Next we have to put the brackets in, which hold up the speaker and marquee LED. So now this is going to be inserted and flipped over because the top panel has been glued and painted so it's not removable. And that's going to insert like this. And we need to tuck this in and out of the way. And that's why we did all the marquee under control panel work first. So we need a bolt is going to stick that there. Finish plugging in power. So this is our LED backlight power, which leaves the last one power to the amplifier. And we'll do Audio input. This is a wire mess right now. Sorry, it's just how it happens. And we have our volume buttons. And this amplifier board is very nice because it has inputs or outputs for volume control, external volume control. So looking at this board, we have up, down, ground for our external volume control. And I've got jumper leads that will go into the respective places. Lastly, we need the main power input. So here's the back panel. You might have noticed where I forgot to putty and fill, but don't worry, it's the back. No one will ever know. And I've got a input DC jack, center positive for our arcade, wired to two quick connect terminals, and we'll thread this through. 
And we can secure this on the other side with a nut. So if you're building this, hopefully you made these leads long enough because now we need to connect them into the main 12 volt input panel distribution in the arcade. Be sure to double check and know your stuff. So we have plus here and negative well, ground in this case on the opposite side. Time to button up. And we'll just tuck all that in there. No one will know how messy it is. I still have some sanding to do and a little bit more painting for this edge uh, because this tolerance fit is even tighter with paint. And let's admire our work. So we have insert coin. And you can select your game. Some volume. Oh boy. And now we'll stick the monitor in, making sure to figure out where down is. It's always helpful. Oh, you know what? F is a 200 watt amp something. I don't know.